Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this lecture series on the rules on evidence. So our first topic will be rule one to eight, general provisions, evidence. Evidence is the means sanctioned by the rules of court of ascertaining in the judicial proceeding the truth respecting a matter of fact. So please memorize this definition under section one of rule one to eight. There are four components of, of uh, component elements of evidence. First, evidence as understood under the rules of court is a means or a methodology of discovery of the truth. It is a means of ascertainment, meaning evidence class is not the end in itself, but a means to an end. And what is that end? The end or objective of evidence is to discover the truth. It includes not only the procedure or manner of ascertainment, but also the evidentiary fact from which the truth respecting a matter of fact may be ascertained. When you say evidentiary fact class, these are facts which are established by evidence before a court of law. So the first component of evidence is that it is a means of ascertainment when you say means of ascertainment, it is not only the procedure, but also the evidentiary fact from which the truth respect, respecting a matter of fact may be ascertained. Now, second component element of evidence is that it is sanctioned by the rules. So when you say sanctioned by the rules, it means not excluded by the rules of court. When you say evidence, this will presuppose that a piece of proof or piece of evidence is admitted in court. In the study of rules of evidence, we will go into the different rules which the court will have to observe before an evidence can be admitted in court. If an evidence or the act of obtaining or procuring evidence violates the constitution, for example, then the evidence may not be admitted in court. I will give you an example. Under Section 2, Article 3 of the Bill of Rights, no, the right against unreasonable searches and seizures is, grand, is guaranteed. When you say right against unreasonable searches and seizures, this, this means that a person may not be arrested without a warrant of arrest or his personal effects or his house, for example, may not be searched without a search warrant as a general rule. Now, if a person is subjected to an unlawful arrest or unlawful search, then any evidence obtained pursuant to such arrest or such unreasonable search may not be admitted in court. In other words, Evidence when obtained in violation of the provisions of the Constitution and all other laws becomes inadmissible in evidence. They may not be admitted in court. Because again, the second component of element of evidence rather is that an evidence must be sanctioned or allowed by the rules. Now, you will ask me, where do you apply the rules on evidence? The third component element of evidence is that it must be in a judicial proceeding. When you say judicial proceeding, it contemplates an action or proceeding filed in a court of law. So the rules on evidence apply only in a court of law. So for example, you are very much familiar with the preliminary investigation not before the office of the city prosecutor. The office of the city prosecutor is under the Department of Justice. And a, a prosecutor or the Department of Justice is not a court of law. So technically speaking, the rigid rules on evidence, not the technical rules on evidence, will not apply during preliminary investigation simply because the third element or third component element of evidence is that it is applicable only in a judicial proceeding. So other proceedings, such as preliminary investigation, 
No, you, you, you do not apply the rules on evidence. Then fourth and lastly, the fourth component element of evidence is that it pertains to the truth respecting a matter of a fact. Now, class, do you, will, you will ask me, why do you need to present evidence in court? Well, the answer to that is found under the Constitution. Under the Constitution, a person is presumed innocent unless otherwise prove, unless proven guilty. No? So every person is presumed by law as innocent and law-abiding citizens. And because the Constitution presumes a person to be innocent, then the burden to prove the guilt of the accused is on the shoulder of the prosecution. It is incumbent upon the prosecution to prove that the accused is guilty of the crime charge and not the other way around. Now, the only way by which the guilt of an accused can be proven is through the presentation of evidence admitted in court. Now, what is the scope of the rules of evidence? The rules of evidence shall be the same in all courts and in all trials and hearings except as otherwise provided by, the, by law or by these rules. It is, the, it is guided by the principle of uniformity. The principle of uniformity class provides that the rules on evidence shall be applied in all court proceedings and in all trial courts and trial hearings, no? or, or hearings rather. Now, it is a system of uniformity, which, needs, which means that all courts must follow uniformly or in, a, in the same manner as all trial courts in the Philippines. Okay? Now, the rules on evidence no, do not apply to election cases, land registration, cadastral proceedings, naturalization, and in insolvency proceedings, and other cases except by analogy or supplementary character and whenever practicable and convenient. Now, at, at this early class, I will already inform you that the rules on evidence is very technical in nature. When you say technical in nature, in case that there is a slight deviation from what the law requires an evidence to be admissible, then that evidence will automatically become inadmissible, meaning it may not be admitted in court. So the rules on evidence do not apply in this legal proceedings. And you have to memorize these proceedings because in these proceedings, the law on evidence or the rules on evidence rather do not apply. So first, land registration, cadastral proceedings, naturalization, and insolvency proceedings. However, the rules on evidence apply to these proceedings except by analogy or in a supplementary character. What do you mean by that? The rules on evidence will only apply in these three proceedings, in these four proceedings rather, when there is absence of a specific rule in those proceedings. Kaya ang tawag dyan class is suppletory, meaning it, is, it can be applied no, in, in the absence of a specific provision in those proceedings. Now, evidence in civil cases. The party having the burden of proof must prove his claim by, a, by preponderance of evidence. Now, class, the quantum of evidence or the weight of evidence required differs on the nature of the complaint. For example, in civil cases, the quantum of evidence or the burden of proof is preponderance of evidence. When you say preponderance of evidence, the evidence of a party is greater or having, or having more weight than the other. So in preponderance of evidence, for example, this is the evidence of the plaintiff. This is the evidence of the prosecution. Preponderance means that the party having the burden of proof has a greater weight of evidence. No? Meaning, in Tagalog, preponderance means lamang siya sa ebidensya. Okay? Now, in civil cases, offer of compromise is not admission of liability and is not admissible in evidence against the offerer. 
And then the concept of presumption of innocence does not apply. Tandaan nyo class, for example, plaintiff will file a complaint against the defendant. If the parties entered or enter into a compromise agreement or settlement, then the party will not be considered by the court as having admitted the complaint filed by the complainant. Now, an offer of, of compromise no, is not an evidence that there is an admission that the other party is liability. Okay? How about evidence in criminal cases? In criminal cases, the guilt of the accused has to be proven beyond reasonable doubt. So in civil cases, the, the standard proof or the required proof, the quantum of evidence is preponderance of evidence. But in criminal cases, the guilt of the accused has to be established beyond reasonable doubt. This is the highest weight or quantum of evidence. Now, class, in criminal cases, the offer of compromise or settlement by the accused can be received and in evidence as an implied admission of guilt. Remember that distinction. And that the accused in a criminal case enjoys the, the constitutional presumption of innocence. Now, let us distinguish between proof and evidence. No? Proof is the effect, no? while evidence is the cause or mode or manner. Proof is the effect when the requisite quantum of evidence of a particular fact has been duly admitted and given weight. While evidence is the mode and manner of providing competent facts in a judicial proceedings. So class, evidence is the cause or the reason. No, it is the, the, uh, the evidentiary fact. While proof class is the effect of evidence. No? Proof the, probati, the proof is the probative effect of evidence, while evidence is the means of proof. What about factum probandum and factum probans? Factum probandum is the, the ultimate fact sought to be established, while factum probans is the intermediate facts. Factum probandum is the proposition to be established, while factum probans is the materials or are the materials which establish the proposition. Factum probandum is hypothetical, while factum probans is in existent. So class, ganito lang kasimple intindi niyan. When you say factum probandum, this is the ultimate fact that a party must establish before the court. So for example, the prosecution in filing a complaint for violation of article of for commission rather of article 315 of the revised penal code or estafa the ultimate fact or facts that the prosecution needs to prove is that number 1 there was fraud or deceit there was uh, damage on the part of the respondent so these are the elements of the crime or the ultimate facts that the prosecution needs to be established this is what you call as factum probandum. This is the proposition sought to be established by the prosecution. Factum probans class is the intermediate facts. It is the materials which establish the proposition and it is in existence. Now, evidentiary question involves the relationship between the factum probandum and the factum probans. Let us go to admissibility of evidence. Class, ano ba ang distinction or difference between admissibility and probative value of an evidence? When you say admissibility of evidence, this is the question of whether certain pieces of evidence are to be considered at all. While probative value is the question of whether the admitted evidence proves an issue. So class, before the court can weigh an evidence, it must be first admitted. No? no evidence which was not admitted by the court can be given weight. Ibig sabihin, class, ang pagtanggap ng ebidensya ay bukod sa usapin kung gaano kabigat ang ebidensya. Ang pagtanggap ng ebidensya, class ng usgado, ay ibig sabihin ang ebidensya ay hindi 
nag-violate, ang pagkuha ng ebidensya ay walang paglabag sa batas. Pag ang pagkuha ng ebidensya ay walang paglabag sa batas, that evidence is admissible. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng tanggapin ng usgado. If the evidence was unlawfully obtained, then the evidence becomes inadmissible. Hindi pwedeng tanggapin ng usgado. Ang tanong, pag ang isabang ebidensya ay tinanggap ng usgado, automatic ba o daglian ba na ang ebidensyang ito ay magiging batayan ng usgado sa kanyang pagre-resolve ba ng kaso? Sagot, hindi. Hindi komo tinanggap ng usgado ang isang ebidensya ay maaari na itong maging deciding factor or makapag-sway sa judgment ng usgado. Kasi class, pag tinanggap ang ebidensya, tsaka pa lamang titignan ng usgado kung meron itong bigat. No? Probative value. Answer the question of whether the admitted evidence can prove an issue. Thus, a particular item of evidence can be admissible, but the evidentiary weight depends on the calibration by the judge within the guidelines provided by the rules of evidence. Again, class, hindi ko mo tinanggap ng musgado ang isang ebidensya ay maaari ng manalo ang isang partido. Depende pa rin yan sa bigat or sa credibility ng evidence na ipinalasenta. Okay? Now, what are the requisites for admissibility of evidence? Number one, relevancy. Number two, competency. Relevancy is such a relation to the fact in issue as to induce belief in its existence or non-existence. Competency is when evidence is not excluded by law or by the rules. Pag sinabing relevancy, meron ba itong connection? Meron ba itong kaugnayan doon sa pinagtatalunan? It is a relation to the fact and issue as to belief in its existence or non-existence. Sabihin, halimbawa, ang pinag-uusapan ay estafa. Then, for example, nag-file ka ng, ng, nag ka ng evidence na sinasabi mo na baliw yung, uh, yung uh, umutang sa'yo. No? So there is insanity. Now, is that evidence relevant to the fact and issue? Is the sanity of a person relevant to the issue of whether or not there was the commission of the crime of estafa? It would appear that it is not. So when, when evidence is not relevant, it may not be admitted in court. No? Unless that evidence of insanity will affect the mental condition of the accused at the time that the transaction was entered into between the parties. But then again, class, mental sanity in itself or by itself is not relevant to the issue of estafa, for example. Now, second is competency. An evidence is competent if it is not excluded by law or by the rules. Now, tandaan nyo, class, pag ang isang ebidensya ay kinuha na mayroong paglabag sa batas. For example, it was unlawfully obtained. For example, may wiretapping. No? If the evidence was obtained in violation of the Constitution or the law, then that evidence is inadmissible in court, meaning it may not be admitted by the court. Now, if that evidence is inadmissible by the court, then ang tawag natin dyan is the doctrine of fruit of the poisonous tree. The court will consider that evidence as poisonous. It is a fruit of the poisonous tree. No? Okay. Okay. So there are two axioms of admissibility according to Wigmore. So papa, bago ma-admit ang isang evidence, kinakailangan ma-fulfill mo muna yung dalawang axiom na sinabi natin kanina, axiom of relevancy, meaning there is a rational probative value, no? Or rational connection between the evidence and the fact and issue. And then axiom of competency, meaning it is not excluded by the rules. Under competent of relevancy, it must have materiality and probativeness. Okay? Now, relevancy means that the evidence has a relation. It has a logical connection to the fact and issue as to induce belief in its existence or non-existence. Now, class, 
Evidence on collateral matters. Anong ibig sabihin niyan, class? When you say evidence on collateral matters, pag sinabing collateral, hindi siya directly kaugnay dun sa kaso, pero siya ay naandun sa tabi. Collateral, nasa mga tabi yan siya, hindi siya direct. No? Now, pwede ka bang magpresenta ng collateral matter? Ibig sabihin, for example, in prosecution of 9165 or the Dangerous Drugs Act, no? Ang ang evid ang direct evidence diyan yung sachet na makukuha mo. No? Mga sachet. But for example, yung evidence on collateral matters, for example, uh, nag-post siya sa sa social media na parang mukha siyang under the influence of a drugs. Is that a direct evidence on drug selling or illegal sale of drugs? No, it is not a direct evidence because The, uh, the the Facebook post that the accused made no showing that he might be in a uh, influence of drugs is not a direct evidence that there was illegal sale of drugs but question can it be presented in court no evidence on collateral matters as a general rule is not allowed hindi yan pwedeng tanggapin ng korte kasi hindi naman yan ang pinag-uusapan. Hindi yan direktang nagpapatunay doon sa tinatanong. No? But there is an exception. Evidence on collateral matters can be presented when it tends in any reasonable degree to establish the probability or improbability of the fact in issue. So pagka, pagka ang ebidensya, ay hindi direktang patunay kung hindi doon sa mga lumiligid lamang or collateral matters, as a general rule, hindi pwedeng ipresenta. Except kung ang pagpipresenta nito ay po pwedeng magpakita kung para sagutin ang tanong, pwede bang nangyari yung ibinibintang o yung kaso o hindi. Pag sinagot niya ang kaso, ang tanong na pwede ba itong Pwede ba nitong uh, sagutin kung maaari itong nangyari or hindi? Then pwede siyang i-present. For example, class. In the prosecution of a crime of murder, pagpatay. For example, uh, meron siyang video na nagbabike siya sa United States of America. And then the crime of murder happened in Manila. Question. Is the video that the... Uh, The accused is biking in the United States a direct evidence that he did not commit the crime of murder. It will up it would appear na hindi siya direct evidence. Why? Kasi pwede naman siyang magbiyahe pa uwi. 'Di ba? But kung ang, kung ang tanong mo ay maaari niya kayang na-commit yung crime ng murder? No? Kahit hindi siya direct evidence, pwede siyang i-allow ng korte. Bakit? Kasi kung nasa Amerika siya, hindi probable na na-commit niya yung crime of murder. So class, evidence on collateral matters is admissible if it will establish the probability or improbability of the fact in issue. No? Okay. okay. So these are the kinds of admissibility of evidence, multiple, no? meaning it can be presented for All purposes or the uh, evidence is plainly relevant and competent for two or more purposes or objective. And then conditional, no, an evidence can be admitted conditionally, meaning evidence appears to be immaterial, is admitted by the court subject to the condition that its connection with another fact subsequent to be proved will be established. And then curative, when evidence that is otherwise improper is admitted to contradict improper evidence presented or introduced by the other party. Okay? So we will not go here. This is for the law students. Okay. Determination of the application of rule of curative admissibility. We will leave that to the law students. Okay. Now, class, what is a direct evidence? Direct evidence, kanina ang pinag-usapan natin, collateral evidence. Ngayon naman, direct evidence. Ano ba yung direct evidence? When you say direct evidence, it establishes the existence of a fact and issue without aid of any inference or presumption. Ibig sabihin, kaya niyang patunayan ang pinag-uusapan or ang pagbibintang ng hindi kinakailangan ng anumang pagpapalagay 
or any inference or presumption. The witness testifies directly of his own knowledge as to the main facts to be proved. What about circumstantial evidence? A circumstantial evidence does not prove the existence of a fact in issue directly, but merely provides for logical inference that such fact really exists. For example, class. Balik ulit tayo sa crime of murder. Ano ang direct evidence? If there is an eyewitness testimony, for example, yung witness sinabi niya, nakita ko na sinaksak ni ACB. Direct evidence yan. Ano naman yung circumstantial evidence? Pag hindi nakita ni, ni witness yung pagsaksak ni A kay B, pero ang nangyari, ang nakita ng witness, lumabas si A doon sa bahay at pagpasok niya doon sa bahay, nagulat siya, nakita niya si B duguan. Now, that eyewitness No, no, so not eyewitness. That testimony no, may not be direct, meaning the witness did not see A stabbing B, but since because the witness saw A leaving the crime, the crime scene or the scene of the crime, and then upon entering, he saw B lying on the ground no, with a bloodbath, then there is an inference. There is a logical presumption or logical inference that A is the culprit of the crime of murder of B. So, ayan ang tinatawag nating circumstantial evidence. Hindi siya direct, pero it can provide for legal inference that such fact really exists. Okay? Now, tanong. Paano kung wala nakakita sa pagpatay? No, walang eyewitness. Walang nakakita. For example, in the crime of murder, pwede bang maipresenta ang circumstantial evidence? Yes. Ang tanong, pag nagpresent ka ng circumstantial evidence, pero walang direct evidence, walang nakakita kung sino nakapatay, pwede mo bang i-convict ang accused using circumstantial evidence only and there is no direct evidence available? Answer, yes. Pwede mong i-convict ang akusado kung merong circumstantial evidence as long as these requisites are present. Number one, there is more than one circumstance. Number two, the facts from which the inferences are derived are proven. And number three, the combination of all circumstances is such as to produce a conviction beyond reasonable doubt. Class, memorize these three requisites. Ang circumstantial evidence pwedeng maka-convict sa accused kung merong more than one circumstance. Number two, the facts from which the inferences are derived are proven. Yung mga, mga fact or mga katotohanan na kung saan mag, mag, mumula ang pagpapalagay or inference are proven, napatunayan mo dapat yung facts. And then the combination, yung pagkakasama-sama ng lahat ng mga bagay na ito is is sufficient to produce a conviction beyond reasonable doubt. Let us go to positive evidence and negative evidence. When you say positive evidence, this is a kind of evidence when the witness affirms that a fact did or did not occur. Okay? It is entitled to a great weight since the witness represents of his personal knowledge the presence or absence of a fact. Negative evidence is when the witness states that he did not see or know the occurrence of a fact and there is total disclaimer of personal knowledge. So class, mas positive evidence. No, it is affirmation. Ganun ng kadali yan, affirmation. Pag sinabi naman negative evidence, it is disaffirmation or disavowal of knowledge. No? Okay. Denial of evidence is a negative evidence. Okay. Competent evidence and credible evidence. A competent evidence is evidence which is not excluded by the rules, while a credible evidence is referring to the worthiness of belief or believability or credibility of a witness. So this is this ends our presentation on Rule 128. I'll see you again next meeting. Thank you and have a nice day.